Hey, what's up everybody? How you doing? Welcome back to Carpo Gaming and another Fallout 76 video. Well, we have a brand new update. Update 1.62. The test your metal update is here. And today, we're going to go over the full patch notes. So once again, thanks for watching everybody. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's just jump right into it with the brand new patch notes for Fallout 76. Test your metal update. Let's start off with the update highlights. Now we're gonna be going over three brand new public events, Fallout First Enhancement, of course, brand new season nine is here, and a corpse highlight feature as well. Now the size of this download will be 17.3 gigabytes on PC Steam, PC Microsoft Store 26.3, PlayStation 25.8, and Xbox 24.6 gigabytes for the brand new update. Now it is time for some highlights of the brand new three public events. Now, every hour on top of the hour, one of the Test Your Metal Moonshine Jamboree or Eviction Notice will be selected to begin. After 20 and 40 minutes after the hour, one event will be selected at random from the full public event pool, which includes one and newest three. After June 20th, public events will resume being selected completely at random every 20 minutes. So if you want to get after those brand new items, this is the time to do it. So first thing first, we have attached your metal in the arena. The Brotherhood of Steel has uncovered the group of blood eagles calling themselves the Rust Eagles. They've been stockpiling spirit robot parts to construct an army of combat bots. Concerned about the threat that has posed on Appalachian, Skybe Valdez has sent a field of team to investigate. Now, you can join the forces with the Gladiators of Steel in a fierce contest to survive against the robots inside the Rust Eagle Arena. Now, the Tesher Metal Public event will appear on the map at the Metal Dome north of Fort Atlas in the Savage Divide. Travel there and speak with the initiative Pappas to start the event. Once the test your medal begins, you'll join three members of the Brotherhood field team to compete as gladiators against the Rust Eagle Deadly Machines. You and the gladiators of steel will square off against the bots in three rounds of frenzy combat. Defeat the opposition in one round and you'll achieve to the next. Once you've conquered all three rounds, you'll earn some sweet loot and XP and have a chance to pick up rare rewards including plants to craft the new Botsmith armor set. Kick a look out for the golden eye about to make an appearance. Do your best to take it down to claim a whole bunch of those lovely rewards. Next up, delivery and eviction notice. The settlers at Foundation have been working to expand the territory by setting up a new encampment within a nearby blast crater. They managed to engineer a solution to the crater's immense radiation levels by inventing a machine known as a rad scrubber. However, a radio broadcast from one of the settlers at the construction site indicated that they have been forced out by a band of super mutants. Fence is created to assess the situation and ensure the area is safe so that you can get back to work. The eviction notice is a challenge new public event tuned for higher level characters. It will appear on your map in the Savage Divide at a crater that can be found east of the Foundation and south of Huntersville. Find and activate the Rat Scrabber within the crater and then prepare for a fight. Now, this is going to be pretty freaking awesome. If successful in driving the super mutants from the crater, you'll earn Settler Faction reputation, some loot, and a chance to receive one of six unique three star legendary weapons. And then we have Join the Moonshiner Jamboree. You're invited to join in the Jamboree at the Moonshine at the Sunday Brothers Cabin. It's tragic what befell the Sunday boys, but their devotion to mixing up some of the finest moonshine in all the Appalachians lives on with Moonshiner Ned, their trusted handbot. Now, there's just one problem. My magic moonshine key ingredient is Gulper Venom, which Ned can't acquire. That is where you come in. That is where the Jamboree truly shines. Help Ned pick up the Sunday brothers left off by hosting a party and track as many of those gulpers around. And after you finish taking out those gulpers by helping out your good old buddy Moonshiner Ned, well, you're going to get yourself some lovely rewards. You're on Raider Faction Reputation, some loot, and an all new Gulper Schmacker melee weapons and the full bottles of that gopher uh, moonshine as well to help increase your attack power which is pretty freaking cool if i don't say so myself next up we of course have season nine this is all about the scoreboard rewards and more so yeah fallout first enhancements is going to be in here as well so you'll be able to rank up and get some brand new rewards if you are a Fallout First member. With Season 9, they're introducing enhancements to the scoreboard. Unlock scoreboard boost. Fallout First members can claim three new score boost rewards at rank 15, 50, and 75, which increase the score they earn from challenges for the rest of Season 9 by 5, 10, and 
10% respectively and additionally. Now, please note, boosts can count towards a challenge base score rewards. They do not multiply with other bonus effects such as double score weekends. For example, if you unlock all three score boosts and you then complete a challenge of 100 score, you're in a total of 125. If you complete that same challenge during a double score weekend, you'll earn its base value of 100 score plus 100 more due to the event and 25 free boosts for a total of 225 score. Complete bonus challenges. Members can also earn even more score by completing Fallout 3's bonus challenges, which will appear as daily or weekly challenge alongside the existing lineup in the challenge menu. Claim more and more rewards. The season scoreboard features many additional rank up rewards for Fallout First members. However, rank up icons and you'll see the Fallout First reward rank side by side, which is pretty cool. Now we have a brand new corpse highlight, which is in Fallout 76. This update introduced corpse highlighting, which will help you more easily spot nearby creatures, corpses, and claim your hard earned loot. Corpse highlighting will be enabled by default on the display tab in the game settings menu. You can also toggle the settings to decide when you like corpse highlighting to disappear from your fallen enemy. After hovering your crosshairs over the corpse to view their quick inventory or after inspecting the corpse, you'll have that highlighted. Now, additional challenges and improvement, critical hits, bonuses. Critical hit damage bonuses are now all additive and we've increased the bonuses from a wide variety of sources to help compensate for this change. Better critical rewards perk cards. Bonus perk cards rank increases from plus 20, 30, and 40% to plus 50, 75, and 100% respectively. Standard receiver bonuses and bonuses increase from 68% to 100%. Auto receiver mods is increased from 36 to 50%. Overdrive bonus increase from 15 to 30%. Eagle eyes mutation increased from 25 to 60%. Eagle eyes when buffed with stranger and numbers perk cards. Bonus increase from 32 to 75%. Tesla slams magazine and number eight increased from 15 to 50%. Firecracker berry juice increased from 10%, 25%, sweet moot fruit tea and mega soft mega soup, blight sloop, and steep thistle tea. Bonus increase from 20 to 50%. Last but not least, all magazine affected per weapon type critical bonus increase from 30% to 100%. Next up, we have bug fixes. Under bug fixes are armor leather arms with an equip brawling mod no longer appear to clip through the left shoulder of male characters. Emote that halt. Emote now plays animations correctly when wearing power armor. Using an emote while standing in a fire or similar hazard no longer causes the player to become stuck in an emote animation. Enemies crippled. Super mutants no longer launch into the air on dev outfits. The firewall outfit helmet now correctly displays a glass face shield when equipped. Power armor. The head like four. Equalizer and Mate Black Equalizer Power Armor Paint now shines in the correct direction when applied to Hellcat Power Armor. Also, applying the yellow Power Armor to paint to set a Power Armor now applies properly interior textures as well. Terminals. Correct it in animation using when entering a terminal that could cause the player view to become misaligned from the terminal screen. Weapons fix the issue that could cause NPCs to hold pipe pistols at odd angles. Characters can no longer clip into the alien disintegrator and the alien disintegrator impact visual effects now correctly changed color based on which receiver mod the player is using. Under caps and workshops, ally furniture, Sam Nguyen workbench can now be moved after being built. Beds, players can now correctly interact with the alien stasis chamber bed. Cap deployables, allies can now move toward a cap that has future tech scan applied to the cap deployable. Miscellaneous structures, the notification that appears after learning a West Virginia slot machine plan that was purchased from Go B a vendor now displays the correct item name. Resources. Mineral extractors now correctly appear in the camp build menu only when the player camp is near an appropriate mineral deposit. Signs. Characters can no longer clip into the water park sign. Survival tent. The scrap box in the APC survival tent is now facing the correct direction. Next up we have combat. Under combat, stealth. Firing a silenced weapon while in stealth no longer causes nearby enemies to instantly detect a player. Vats fix the issue in which Vats critical hits were not generating to strike the target. Fix the issue that which Vats to randomly close while firing an enemy with clear line of sight. Vats no longer randomly closes while targeting certain robotic enemies. Firing explosive weapons in Vats no longer causes duplicate damage numbers to appear. 
firing a missile launcher into Vats now correctly progressed the critical hit meter, exiting the world with the ProSnap Deluxe camera equipped no longer prevents the player to, from opening Vats after joining in a new world, and players can no longer target disarmed mines using Vats. Under Events and Quest, Ally Crash Landing. Super Mutants now correctly approach the crash site when the player is retrieving the flight recorder. Low bearing fixed the issue in which the player could not mine minerals during the low bearing public event. The miscellaneous objective to exchange token at terminals that displays after cleaning this public event no longer always reappear after logging out and back in. Monster Mash removed a functioning reward option from the smart choice machine. Overshare mission, the small backpack plan, no longer responds in the overshare cache inside the Morkatown Airport for players who've already learned it. Overshare mission, the overshare's cache say at site Bravo now correctly spawns Vault Boy and Vault Girl statue plans instead of two Vault Girl statue plans. These plans no longer spawn and Overseer Cache if the player has already learned them. Path to Enlightenment, the Lighthouse of Latin no longer continues to prompt the player to deposit bioluminescent fluids after completing this public event trade secrets. Players can now correctly pass through the laser grid to access the Hornwright Estate safe room as long as they collected the required key card and Fallout Worlds. Custom Worlds fix the issue in which characters that were linked to a shared custom world could still join the world after owner had deleted it. Next up we have items. Under items and armor, Thorn's armor description now correctly indicates that it deals 250 damage. The shrouded mod for wood armor now correctly provides improved stealth in dark areas. Fix the issue causing hardened mods from Brotherhood Recon and Secret Server armors to provide less damage resistance than intended. Fix the issue that causing the fiberglass mod from combat armor to provide less damage resistance than intended. Crafting sturdy robot torso armor no longer costs a fewer materials than intended. Arctic arm marine armor can now receive the same armor paints that marine armor can. Backpacks fix a visual issue causing the high capacity backpack mod to display astronomically huge damage resistance stats. Exploit address exploit through which players could significantly increase the size of weapon magazine. Address the exploit through which it was possible to duplicate a set of power armor. Food and drinks. Bit Boy item previews from alcohol beverages now correctly displays the special bonuses and penalties the player will receive after consuming them. Item names. Corrected several typos and naming inconsistencies across a variety of different item plans and mods. Power Armor. The Father Winter Power Armor Helmet can now be restored to its standard appearance. Excavator Power Armor now correctly provides extra drawer or from mining when both left and right arms are equipped. Equipping a Power Armor Torso with the Kinetic Dynamo mod no longer interferes with the effects of the Kinetic Servo mods on Power Armor eggs. Legendary Weapons. The Lucky Legendary Weapon Effect now correctly provides its 15% bonus to critical hit meter's fill rate. Legendary Weapons, the Curse Prefix now properly appears in the name of Curse Legendary Weapons. Melee Weapon, Switchblade can now be restored to its standard appearance. The Revolutionary Store no longer has an extra no upgrade mod that visually removes its blade. Range Weapons, the Homemade Rifle Tweak Receiver mod now correctly increases critical hit damage. The Flamer now takes condition damage at a lower rate. Fix the issue that prevented the Cryolator from taking condition damage and rewards. Correct the issue in which a number of former Nuclear Winter Mode rewards could be traded or built in the camps of players who did not own them. Next up we have perk cards. Mr. Sandman, the Mr. Sandman perk card no longer provides a different sneak attack bonus when equipped before or after the Covert Ops perk card. Additionally, the sneak attack bonus from Mr. Sandman has been doubled at all ranks. Quick hands fix the issue that could cause quick hand perk card to trigger more often than intended. Super duper fix the issue that could cause a super duper perk card fanfare to play even through the perk hadn't triggered. Sound, music, Daily Ops no longer plays in interior cells when the player is in participating Daily Ops and user interface challenge tracker. Attempting to track multiple challenges in quick succession no longer causes challenge to visually duplicate in challenge tracker. Notification following a successful sneak attack with the melee weapon, a notification now correctly appears to inform the player that the attack dealt bonus damage. Player vending machines, player can now inspect items listed for sale on other players' vending machines, and the preview image for items now correctly appear in the vending machine. Quest tracker. Address an issue in which a public event will sometimes not appear in the quest tracker after fast traveling to that public event via the map or world activity menu. Scoreboard, fall off first reward for previously achieved rank ups now correctly appear claimable if the player joins Fallout first partway through a season. Trade, legendary item previews in the player trade menu now correctly displays all of an item's legendary attributes. And last but not least, world, pathing, address a number of locations where the players could become stuck. So there you have it, huge new update to Fallout 76 is here, the brand new Tessier Metal update, 
new events, new rewards, and more. A whole lot to get after. So yeah, that's pretty much going to for the video. I hope you truly enjoyed it. As always, if you're new to the channel, how you doing? Welcome. Don't forget to subscribe right here at Carpool Game below a wide variety of videos, ranging from updates, tips and tricks, guys and news, and a whole lot more. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Once again, thank you everybody for all your love and support. And as always, I'll be seeing y'all in the next one. Later.